So that's my quick tour of some various areas of AI. Um, to recap, uh, these applications are tough. Um, AI is having big successes, but it's also facing big problems, which makes it one of, it makes it something that's really fun to work on um, because you're facing these really challenging ideas. So you have to know about context for lots of things. You have to know something about the world um, to be able to do well at these tasks. Um, there's uncertainty about the input. You can't count on every time I see a towel, that towel looks exactly the same. Um, and a lot of these things require intensive computation. So one of the ways, for instance, we've gotten better at chess was computers got a lot faster, so we could plan ahead many more moves. That was great. Um, so there, the underlying algorithms didn't maybe change as we got better so much as we were able to store more things. Um, so AI is tough, but it's been relatively successful at making progress. Um, and in cases like chess and checkers, it's perhaps better than people. Um, so Deep Blue, the Chess player, computer chess player beat the world champion, grandmaster. Um, so, neat. Okay, so Alan Turing thought about this question. He was uh, this amazing computer scientist and mathematician, helped break the Enigma code, World War II. Um, he defined a test in 1950 about whether a machine could think. And he said, okay, put a human in one room, put a computer in another room, and then have a third room where there's a judge. And the judge can communicate with the two rooms, uh, either via typing or, in some cases, um, people thought about via voice. And basically, the judge can ask the things in the rooms whatever it wants, uh, whatever he or she wants. I guess the judge is always a person. <laughs> but the judge doesn't know which room has a computer and which room has a person. And Turing said, well, if the judge can't tell which is which, then we can say that machine has passed the Turing test. And in some cases, in some sense, this was because of expediency. Um, the question was, if you want to define something else, how do you justify, say, some other characteristic, requiring some other characteristic to say a machine is intelligent? If you want to be able to sometimes say that machines are intelligent, it's hard to justify, well, does it need to have neurons? Well, probably not. Uh, does it need to think in some way that I can understand? I'm not sure. So his test was behavior. Um, and in some ways mirrors the idea that McCarthy said later, the definition we start out with of, it's intelligent if it looks, does something that looks like, you know, what we think of people doing as intelligent. Um, and so John Searle is a philosopher who's argued against this idea. Um, and he said, all right, imagine, imagine you put someone in a room. Um, they're locked in the room. They don't speak Chinese. They have a phrase book. Um, in this book, there are Chinese characters. On each page, there are Chinese characters on the left side, and on the right side, there's some more Chinese characters. You tell the person, all right, if you see the Chinese characters on the left side, copy down the Chinese characters on the right side. Um, and let's say now there's a slot where you can pass in a piece of paper and pass out a piece of paper. And the person manages to have a conversation in Chinese this way. So they get passed in Chinese characters, they use their phrase book, they copy things out. And Cyril said, well, that's like the Turing test, and you would never say that that person understands Chinese. Um, and so his argument is, well, this just isn't enough to say something about understanding. Understanding is something more complex. Um, and that argument has gone back and forth. Um, people have argued that, well, the person doesn't understand Chinese, but in some sense, the whole system understands Chinese. So just like there's not one neuron in my brain that understands English or knows about my dog, but as a whole, I know about those things. Um, and so it's been a philosophical argument that sometimes in AI we like to just kind of ignore. Um, but it's something to keep in mind um, that has set up this field and that people really do think about. Um, OK, so in the last few minutes here, um, so in summary, uh, AI systems excel in things that computers are good at. Um, so games where there are set rules um, and where we can just try to look ahead lots of moves, computers are really good at those. Um, computers are good when they've got lots of data. So one of the big advances um, that has happened is just having the web to have tons and tons of data to be able to process. And that's made a huge difference. You can apply the same algorithms you were applying 40 years ago to lots of data, and they perform sort of almost as well as the best algorithms now do with very little data. So, Big data can help a lot. Um, constrained worlds they're good at. 
AI is getting better at language understanding and real-time robotics, so it, these sort of more complex, more human type things, um, making lots of strides. Um, and thanks so much for coming. <laughs>